Welcome to the third week of uh, classes. Uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about locks and synchronization and how to coordinate multiple threads uh, in an application. So this would be your first introduction to concurrency and synchronization. The next segments of a uh, couple of segments of uh, videos will also deal with uh, concurrency and synchronization. We're going to be looking at different types of synchronization such as locks, uh, monitors, semaphores, and the different uh, atomic variables, the different uh, programming patterns where each one of these is useful, and also taking a concrete example by taking a look at the Linux kernel and see where um, each of these synchronization mechanisms are used. All right, so the first question we're going to try to answer is why do we need parallelism? Um, even though for most of you this may seem a straightforward answer at this point, um, you know, multi cores are here. Uh, why, were multi why are multi cores here? Right? So we'll try to answer that question uh, in a few slides. Uh, then we'll look at this notion called atomicity. Uh, which is fundamental to um, the way people need uh, to reason about parallelism. The mechanisms I spoke about, such as locks, semaphores, and monitors, are all implementation techniques. Atomicity is the way programmers normally reason about parallelism. And then we look at mutual exclusion, uh, which is kind of orthogonal to atomicity. Uh, but it's uh, more of an implementation um, strategy. So atomicity is a way to reason about things, while mutual exclusion can be thought of as a way to implement it. Um, although mutual exclusion also has notions um, um, that are similar to atomicity. We look at why uh, the, the differences between atomicity and mutual exclusion, uh, the safety properties, of, and then liveness, and so on and so forth. Um, we look at all of these uh, with reference to a specific example, um, which is known as the got milk example, uh, or go get the milk. Um, we will look at this uh, simple uh, real life situation and try to b build a program around this and see uh, how each of these techniques are useful. So the first thing we're going to think talk about is why parallelism. Okay, and to st to start with that, I'm actually going to uh, show you a plot of uh, clock frequency of processors starting from 85. If you look at this plot uh, from 85 to uh, around 99, 2000, 2004, we are on this. Note that this is an exponential curve. Uh, so this is an uh, exponential curve, and we've been pretty much doubling the frequency, and at some point we kind of went on this flat curve. Right. So we were, we were increasing it, and then there was a bridge period around 03, 04, and then frequency kind of flattened out. Um, this was the edge of the one chord or the single chord systems, and this is the edge of the n chords or multi chord systems. And multi chord systems really uh, happened because clock frequency tapered off. Now, why is clock frequency important? Clock frequency was the primary um, or the primary determinant of performance. So. If you had high clock frequency, you had high performance, and every uh, generation, when you double the clock frequency, you got performance pretty much for free for most applications. Okay, and so once that stops scaling around this point, then the only way you're going to extract performance is by throwing more cores at the problem. So instead of stamping out faster cores, you're stamping out more cores. Except that you've got to vend out work to each of these cores. So you got to make sure that your application uh, has enough work. Uh, that can be parallelized and given to each core. Right? And so the question is, how do you do that? Okay. And the reason that happened was because CPUs consume a lot of power. Um, so in this figure, I've, I've plotted again 85 uh, to 2011. This is the year, these are the years. And on the y-axis, you've got power, again, exponential. So you've got 10 watts, 100, 1,000 watts. Okay. If you look at the early 85 processes, they were only at about a watt. And today we kind of tape it off at 100 watts. Why 100 watts? Uh, 100 watts is the uh, limit at which um, essentially air cooling techniques are no longer sufficient and you may need to move into liquid cooling. And that would be pretty bad for most systems 
uh, it would be pretty exotic. And so 100 watts is a point at which we taper off. So 100 watts is what you can uh, dissipate in a fixed die size, so about a centimeter square. And so you don't want to make a dies bigger, they're about the same size, and in general, um, now that means there's an increase in power density, the amount of power that you got to dissipate per millimeter square. And the more power you got to dissipate, the more the higher the temperature, the higher the temperature, the more cooling that's needed. And so this is one of the primary reasons and it almost directly coincides with the uh, frequency scaling uh, shift. So if you look at it, uh, you scaled similar to frequency and then you have a flat curve, right, around the 2003 mark. And so this is the primary reason frequency scaling stopped. So you do, if you want to increase frequency further, you need to dissipate more power, which you didn't want to, so you kept the power constant. If you get power constant, you don't get to scale up frequency anymore. If you can't scale up frequency anymore, then you need more cores to uh, help you recuperate the performance loss. Uh, I would encourage everyone to read the reference at the bottom as to um, how digital design and how processes will in general change for the future. Right. So increasing core clock and core complexity means increasing power dissipation. Uh, that's the primary reason why we went multi-core. Okay. So why is so what does this mean? So in the past, uh, you had increased processor performance. Uh, that meant uh, larger, more featureful software, larger development teams, higher level abstractions, slower programs. Not always, but um, and more features come slow down. Uh, and then by the time this cycle came around, uh, you had increased processor performance for the next generation, and so then the cycle continued, continued again, right? And this kept going on for a long time. The point is, but now what happens if the processor performance stops? If that stops, then this virtuous cycle of uh, better software essentially breaks down. And the question is, the game's over, and the next game is essentially multi-core. And so, as software developers, irrespective of whether you're developing operating systems or not in the future, you, ha you have to be very concerned. Uh, you have to pay a lot of attention because the only form of programming that people will pay attention to in the future is parallel programming. Right. And here's a more uh, quantitative way of looking at how this works. So, Essentially, if you look at you know each core and each core gives you a performance of X, so that's the X, and you drop frequency by forty percent, um, you you essentially because power is proportional to frequency um, square in some ways. So if you drop frequency by forty percent, then you're only at quarter of the power, which means you can throw four times more cores, okay, because the same power budget. Each core itself performs at 60% of its overall because you drop uh, frequency by 40%. Right, uh, your performance uh, goes down by 40%, while power goes down by 75%, and that's the bet. So the bet is if you drop frequency you drop more power than you drop performance, which means um, you can throw more cores as a problem. And if you got linear scaling, so four cores, each at 60% of its performance, gives two, point, two and a half times the performance. right? And that, that's the general idea. So you can either put one core at X performance, or you can put four cores, each running at 60% of the original core's performance, but together they totally give about two and a half times the performance. Right? And this is the fundamental idea behind this whole multi-core revolution. Obviously, there are these other components, these um, components known as the uncore, that in general are also a fixed uh, amount of power consumption, and they have their own trade-offs.